welcome to another episode of Flyora and Antilandalus Outreach. We're going to talk organically off the cuff, uh, just random things and some topics. So, hi, Antilandalus Outreach. Yeah, hello. How are you doing? You alright? I'm okay. I'm just going to have a coffee. You start talking. Okay, enjoy your coffee. Uh, coffee is one of those small luxuries in life that we like to utilize to make everything feel okay. It's uh, it's another little addiction, caffeine addiction, um, something we use to trick our brain into feeling stimulated, feeling good. So uh, yeah, I'm all for the coffee, the tea, the chocolate, and... Uh, Whatever you can do that isn't too harmful to make yourself feel okay. Do you take sugar in your coffee, Fly? Um, no sugar for me, but I sort of have a bit of coffee withdrawals because I slept all day yesterday and I didn't drink any coffee yesterday, so I have to make up for my okay. withdrawal. So making up for it now. You might get all jittery now and start... Uh, being all buzzy and chatting shit, but um, hey, at least that'll be two of us chatting shit then. <laughs> so, what was I gonna say? You said you feel I despondent talk about, about hope. I think we talk about hope because you know today I've been feeling a little bit despondent, a little bit crappy um, about antinatalism, if I'm honest. Um, like, it's difficult, isn't it, trying to preach to people about it, to talk, talking to people about it who aren't already converted, if you like, through their own self-discovery. It's difficult to persuade people to take it seriously. And, yeah, I'm, I'm just feeling a little bit rough uh, regarding that. Um, so... I think the conclusion I've come to is be true to yourself. So if it makes sense to you as an individual, then that's all that matters. Like we can't, we are, we are only human. We can't do miracles. We can't make people see sense. So I suppose it's just finding comfort in knowing you're doing the right thing as an individual. And that's really all we can do, you know? Yeah. But it's, it's, it's sort of like, um, many people would grasp the concept if, if they were exposed to it and we didn't have so much ridicule going on. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose we are totally going against the grain, you know, um, we are brainwashed from you know, the first time we hear our parents talk all our way through school, we're brainwashed into thinking that humanity is is something special and that we should um, keep going. Um, as a species, we should encourage our furtherance into the future. Um, so if you were, you know, if you were rich... I, I do, I, I sorry. I must say, I do think we are special, and I, I, I believe a lot of us are too good, if you like, to be here in this world of suffering. We're too kind-hearted. We're too sensitive for our own good. So, sorry, you were saying, fly. If you were rich, would you think that you would have kids? If I was rich. Would I be an antinatalist? That is the question. And, um, you know, if we're talking super rich here, I think a lot of super rich people have a narcissistic drive or a psychopathic drive or some type of uh, emotional inability to understand people around them or, or some type of shutter that's pulled down so they don't think about life too much. And they are 
selfishly motivated towards their own individual goals. So this hypothetical question, I think if I was rich, I probably wouldn't be an anti-natalist, if I'm honest. Yeah. Well, I have met a fairly rich person that is an anti-natalist. Um, I think he's, he's commented on one of your videos. I've, I, I can't remember his name at the moment, but he's... He's really like down and depressed, and but he's rich, so. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. Um, I, 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 I suppose it does happen. I mean, some people are born into privilege, you know, um, and some people, uh, because even though they're born into privilege, it's not to say that they're happy, or it's not to say that they're not emotionally alert. Um, or they may have suffered hardship and realised the horror of this world. So, you know, yeah, just because you're rich doesn't mean you can't be an anti-natalist. Um, I suppose also, even if you've made the money by your own hand, by your own hard work, the fruits of your own labour, you can still come to the realisation that this world is terribly cruel. Um, you know, because I think that a lot of us, we all, we all, a lot of us started out with um, hope in our hearts that uh, the kind of Disney narrative of life that we're taught in the schools that this world is a magical place where all your dreams can come true and that everything works out for the best we kind of hope that to be true but then as we age we realise the grotesqueness um, of it all um, the harsh suffering the innocent victims that are just crushed one after the other, like little ants crushed by the soul of nature. So yeah, um, Fly, how do you feel about this? What What's your kind of, how do you deal with this feeling that, you know, our efforts on mass may be futile? Um, I think the main reason f to advocate is for personal reasons, so so that the world knows where you stand as a person, and they respect where your wish to not procreate. That for me, that's important to that people respect that I'm not the I'm not fit to become a mother, and that should be respected by the population in, in the world and um <clears throat> that's really something that i think a lot of women should come to the conclusion to is realize well y you are not qualified or fit to become a mother and take action based on that suffering and the fact that just by being created you are causing harm to others because you're taking away resources from them i don't think there's any good reason to bring anyone into this world um so i'm not going to change my mind on that um the difficulty is bringing that to the table bringing that to the agenda for people to think about and accept but you know let's be honest um, antinatalism is growing in terms of its publicity. I mean, we had Raphael Stevens getting into the limelight earlier this year. Um, David Bennett has become uh, more widely known as well um, through news and publications online. Um, and, you know, people like In Mendham, Old Fan, they are, um, you know, growing they have to have quite a few subscribers i mean in mendham unfortunately doesn't have as many sub subscribers as he deserves and that but hopefully hopefully things will change but every day there is a new twitter account or a new someone following you following your social media so the community is growing the awareness is growing um and that's that's a good thing, I suppose. We're at least putting the message out there and making people.
people think, you know. Um, but as you know, I'm always wary of hurting people, upsetting people, or causing harm. You know, it's quite a bleak message, I suppose, to some people. And it's hard to kind of, it's, it's hard to take responsibility for putting that message out there because you don't want to hurt people. Some people, you're, you're literally shattering dreams by saying, look, here is the truth. Because some people just have no idea of the truth and they think that we're living in some type of perfumed delight, you know, um, some type of fluffy, wuffy, brilliant place where it's all just happy, clappy, and everything can be okay if you work hard enough or if you try. Um, unfortunately, we all know that that is not the truth. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's, it's a tough responsibility, it's a tough burden to know the truth, to know that, you know, antinatalism is, is the truth, is the way out of something for humanity. It's, it's tough to be in that minority that knows, that is awakened to that fact. Um, but I would argue by publicising it, by talking about it, we're doing the right thing because we're literally saving innocent sentient beings from pointless suffering. Um, and that's what it's all about at the end of the day. So that's my little bit of thought on that one. Well, what you're saying is absolutely correct and true. And I think that um, even if people don't know antinatalism, they can have their own reasons for not having children. That's fine. And um, just, I think overall as a society, the more and more people that don't have children the more society will shift and change to support those that don't have children. If if everybody just had children, then society would look completely different than if, like, it is shifting in most societies and, and um, there's, you know, it's not so family-focused as, as a society on large. So it would support people that don't have children and... Uh, I personally have mentioned in my other videos. I've got a bit of echo. Yeah, a bit of echo. Yeah, uh, but, you know, it's not completely hopeless when you think about, well, most people that... I'm happy that I've met people that haven't had children, even though they're not antinatalist, but that still makes me happy knowing that they didn't have kids. Yeah. I think uh, what gives me hope and I suppose comforts me and even makes me happy is talking to other antinatalists, you know, creating that community where we can talk to each other um, because that breaks down the stigma attached to it that you feel in normal day-to-day -day life if you air these opinions, you know, people will look at you as if uh, you're some type of serial killer or, or monster, um, when really we're coming from a place of compassion and love and empathy. We don't want innocent sentient beings to suffer. Um, we're fed up of it. We've had enough of it. And we want to stop it. And the only way we can stop it is by taking the rational decision not to replicate and, you know, it's not, it's not our fault that these stupid fuckers can't see that. And it's very, very frustrating. It's very frustrating to see welfare whores churn out children, um, you know, knowing when we know full well that those children are going to have harsh and, and often go as terrible lives, um, all inflicted upon them, you know, by their drug-addled parents, their... It, it, it's horrific. And, um... But at least some of us have the conscience, the social awareness to say, hey, that's wrong. By the way, I'm not just picking on welfare whores. As I said before, I think it's all 
all bollocks. It's all wrong. We're just uh, brainwashed by a bunch of weirdos, men in skirts, priests telling us to do this, that, and the other. But nobody tells the truth. Nobody, nobody tells us, hey, you know what? Life is the curse. It's an imposition. It's being forced upon you. And it would have been better if you'd never come here at all because you would not have known any anything about that and you would not have suffered, you would not have risked the harm of being and you would not have died. Yeah. Sorry about um, if I seem a bit melancholy tonight, but there you go. Well, that's great. I think that's fantastic what you're saying is true and... Um... Uh, in terms of um, making people upset about these things, um, what is your personal what is your personal experience when you bring up antinatalism to people? Uh, for an example, because um, I've I've talked about my personal experiences with people that yeah, gen the general population. Um, sort of has procreation as a goal in their life and that's what motivates them that's what gets them up in the morning and makes them go to work and yes you know um, well I have been speaking quite frankly about it in public to acquaintances and friends um, a few friends have accepted it and think I'm right um, they didn't necessarily they didn't know the term antinatalism but they were quite vocal in their decision not to have a child because they just thought it's such a risk, it's such a, an imposition, it's such a horrific world, they didn't want to do that. And I was talking to them about antinatalism and they couldn't take a fall in it, so I suppose that gave me um, some satisfaction and personally that this philosophy that I've um, come across, that I've adopted, that I've always thought about, but I didn't necessarily have the word antinatalism to, to give it a title. It's comforting to know, to get feedback, positive feedback from people you respect. And uh, I have a lot of respect for a lot of antinatalists out there because I find a lot of them are very caring. There's a lot of vegans out there. There's a lot of people who are just very compassionate, caring, empathetic people. There's a lot of highly intelligent people in the antinatalist movement as well. So it's good to get feedback from people you respect intellectually and emotionally. Um, but yeah, I've also had the kind of, uh, a few people have said, oh, that's evil. You know, in real life, when I've spoke about antinatalism, that it's evil. Um, and, you know, I'll give you an example. One of these people that I, who said that to me, um, basically spends his whole day in the pub every day, um, smoking, drinking, um, after work, he does work, um, and lives by himself, and it's quite a bitter and angry, horrible man, he, has, he does, he does say horrible things about people, and, um, you know, he's, I've often thought he's very much lacking in empathy, so uh, it's kind of strange when, you know, you say something to people and then they turn around and say it's evil, okay, even though you're trying to protect people from suffering, okay. It's it's ironic, to say the least. And it's also ironic when some of these people that shout to us fervently that we're evil for saying these things or thinking these things are the very same people who don't really take their hand out of their pocket to help others or don't do jack shit to benefit society in, in, in any way um, or let's say they don't help people who are vulnerable, needy or um, lonely or whatever, lacking love or whatever they, they, um, they just drink and smoke their cigarettes or do their self-obsessions that they're um, addicted to and they don't really think too much about the actual huge problem that we're facing, aka life. 
aka existence, aka sentience. So yeah. That, Your that, turn. that was well said. Um, well, I've already mentioned a lot of things in my own videos, and I agree with what you're saying, that it's good to connect with other antinatalists, because you don't really find a lot in the real world out there. Um, and in terms of it being considered evil, I come across it multiple times on social media, especially when I'm arguing for birth control, abortion, and against these pro-life people, you know, they just use magic buzzwords and they don't really listen to the arguments, they don't really confront the argument, they just like, oh, that's evil, or that's harming fetuses, or whatever. Um, so I stopped talking about abortion and I just moved the focus to other birth control, because pro-life people they they want to like say we're evil for for you using for abortion and i think yeah i don't want to go too much into that on on this video because i argue it a lot on on social media for well can i just say within the anti-natalist movement there are people who are anti-abortion as well and i understand that i do um because I am anti-killing people like uh, in terms of life. I don't think anyone has the right to end someone's life. Um, and there are anti-natalists out there who are basically anti-conception, if you like. They think it's wrong for humans to allow conception because from the moment of conception, you are allowing... Um, suffering um, of uh, a living being and then there's you know the people like in Mendham and that who argue that you know abortion is perfectly fine because our nervous systems are not very well developed as fetuses and basically it doesn't hurt all that much to be um, plucked from a vagina and uh, plopped on plop, plop to the dustbin because our nervous systems are not developed enough to, to hurt all that much. That is yes, a... It's a really, I find it a very uncomfortable conversation, if I'm honest, Fly, because as I say, as an empath, as somebody who doesn't want people to suffer, it's a difficult one, um, because I know as well abortion causes suffering and mental illness for the women. Some, sometimes I've, I've met women who, who suffer immensely from... Um, Having been through abortions, uh, it's not it's not a very pleasant experience. Um, but you know, as a man, I don't don't think I have a right to tell a woman what to do. It's her body, um, it's her life, it's her choice. It's a necessary uh, it's a necessary evil. I must say, the argument can go further than that in terms of overpopulation and everything. It's not just about the suffering of a fetus. And they haven't come well, into I, the world. But yeah, instance, I understand. I would say first instance to save a lot of problems, save a lot of hassle. I and come across know, this. Oh, I come across this problem. argument with yeah. a lot of men. You know, it's it mainly to stop men. The conception to stop the actual conception. I think that's the best all-round solution going forward. If we can, as a society, adopt practices to stop conception. I, I think that would be the best um, achievement for mankind. You know, then there'll be no argument over abortion or killing, or, or you know. There, there are alternatives. There are alternatives. There are alternatives. Like, there's ways to be infertile, and um, and if you're infertile, just don't focus on becoming fertile, and also. There are options of like using sex robots that is coming out now recently that I think will have a huge yeah. impact and I personally am for sex robots even though I've made a video about it and there are very few feminists, uh, radical feminists are against sex robots for very stupid reasons but it's very antinatalist, 
you know, I think it would be perfect for men, for men and women, you know. I'm not, like, against sex robots, and I think they sh well, it know, would be great. You know, the robots take over the world, the better, from my <laughs> view. Uh, yeah. It's going to happen. It's never to and there's, and there's uh, other birth control. Uh, develop and develop, and we are going to become redundant. The worker ants are going to become redundant. Uh, the queen, The queen is going to be served by these amazing robots and the rest of us will be squashed we will yeah and there's run. other birth control uh, methods yeah, the there's the are coming they're going to take over um and the, what's going to be left in the future that humanity is going to be left is not going to be the same as today if if, in, if we come back in two years time to see what we are we're going to be these genetically engineered creatures um whose every whim is served by a robot it's going to be it's going to be a sterile synthetic environment and well, well I don't want to go I don't want to go into I don't want to I don't want to go into speculation about the future I just want to say that there are other birth control methods if you're against conception you can always be celibate abstain or if you don't want to do that get a vasectomy get but vasectomy. yeah and there's and if and you can always uh, use other birth control. There's a lot of birth control out there. So, and these women getting abortions that regret getting abortions, well, you can always counsel them. There's no problem. You can, they can go to therapy. They can get counseled. And it's not the worst thing that can happen to a human being. There's worse things that can happen. And I think antinatalism, I, I think as I've mentioned this a long time ago, that there should be antinatalist therapists out there counselling people about abortion and counselling people about infertility. And because a lot of people are hung up on the fact that they're infertile, that they had an abortion. And we, and as antinatalists, I think we will be great counsellors, like convincing people that... Uh, I know this sounds ridiculous, but it would be so much better if we could change people's minds and make them feel good about being sterile, infertile, and not and not having children. And that's what antinatalism is about, feeling good about our choice not to have children. It, it, it's, it's not always about just being child-free or vehement or or like birth strikers, being confident that we made the right decision not to have children for whatever reason it is. And, and, I'm, I, and in terms of hope, I have a lot of hope because I, even if people are not taking on the philosophy of antinatalism, they're not having children for other reasons. And I, and I have huge hope, even if they do have children, it's always one, one child. I see people with just one child. And if they have more children, then, then they're not, they're not necessarily, um, like the birth rate in most countries, it's really below replacement level, and and it can be viewed positively and encouraged, and we can support people that don't have children, and that's that's new new concepts that people in the past didn't even have this idea that well we're gonna support people that don't have children except for the priests and nuns. Um, you know, it wasn't really, you couldn't really survive without having this institution of having children. That's true. Um, okay, Fly, how long have we been talking? We've got half an hour. Do you want to continue or do you want to end it there? I think we'll terminate it. Okay, um, I'll, I'll upload it. Thank you for joining me. Let's support this conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you.